Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G297 and welcome to the video. In this episode I'll be sharing two new builds at Duck Expressway. Uh, the first one is going to be the new Audi TT Coupe from 09. Uh, new car that was released back at, uh, for this new update. I'll show you guys basically where to get the car, the setup I'll be using, and of course the livery itself. And after that, I'll show you guys the next car. If you want to fast forward to the, my second car I'll be using for this video, then you're more welcome to do so. Um, but first things first, if you're new to the channel, then welcome. I do all kinds of money grind videos, uh, usually for Tokyo Expressway, Sardina, and Le Mans. Tokyo is my to-go, to-go place. Um, but I've also done plenty of coverage at Le Mans and Sardina. Um, now, this is not my natural voice. I actually am kind of under the weather right now. So I want to do apologize for that. I am doing better. Um, but if my voice does sound a little bit rough... Uh, and I'm just sick so this is not my natural voice so I do apologize for it so hopefully you guys can bear with it um, but yeah without no further ado let's get started with the episode so as I mentioned first you need to get the car you can actually get this car right now at both Brand Central and the used car dealership but if you guys want to do save some credits I do recommend getting it at the used car dealership going to cost you about 63,800 credits uh, for the car. Here's also the two new cars that also is in this release as well. So here's the car itself. As you can see, there's all the stats uh, that comes with the car itself. It's all-wheel drive drivetrain, about 268 horsepower, 258.2 pounds of torque. Uh, the weight is a little bit heavy on about 3,100 pounds, and this is a turbocharged aspiration. Um, other than that, pretty decent stats uh, for the car, so I really do go ahead and purchase this car um, for all kinds of races other than Tokyo, Tokyo Expressway. And that's how you get the car at the used car dealership. Now, if you went ahead and bought it new, it's not too much expensive, just a couple more thousand credits. Uh, but like I said, just get at the used dealership if you plan to save more credits uh, on your balance. So, in this part of the episode, I'm going to show you guys my Grand Tribunal 7 profile, which is Jeffrey g 10 yt That way, if you guys do follow, want to see my videos and follow me through my videos, and like to follow me through the game, that way it would be much easier if you decide to follow my step-by-step -step process. So, the livery I'll be using for this car is this really gorgeous Audi TTS BTCC livery. Uh, so, if you don't follow me in the game, just look up for the top three keyword searches if you plan to use this livery if you want to. And side note, make sure the car is has the wide body kit installed in the car. If not, you will not be able to upload and put this livery on this car. That's just one extra side note to keep in mind. Now, if you guys do want to follow me in the game, what I recommend doing is go to a showcase tent and just basically have the keyword search Jeffrey G297. And it doesn't matter if it's pictures or decals, liveries, all that sort. Uh, so I'm going to use this picture as an example. And like I said, just make sure you have the keyword search being the child's name, Jeffrey G297. After that, uh, just pick either a decal, a livery, or a photo. You're going to then going to move your cursor down to the child's logo. Cl click X, click on your page, and then where it says player profile on my screen, and your screen should be a blue follow button. It'll then ask you if you want to follow me in the game or not, and if you say yes, then you'll follow me in the game. That way, if you do follow me in the game, you can easily go to my news feed and you can basically add and collect that same livery that I'll be using in my videos. So if you guys do not want the livery but you want the parts, here is the rims for the car. It's the Oz Racing Oz Super Turismo LM. Just make sure the rims is set to wide offset. Uh, for your custom parts, the front is going to be Type B. The side is going to be natural, standard. The rear, you're going to keep it standard as well. And then for the wing, it's going to be type A. And for your very last part for this car, it's going to be the roll cage. It's going to be set to type C. And that is going to be it for a car customization uh, with the Audi TT Coupe. Now to the setup for itself. Uh, this setup has a lot of stuff uh, in this car. So first things first, we're going to be using Sport Hards. Uh, as our tire compound choice. Um, after that, we're going to keep our suspension, keep it at normal. That's what I recommend doing. After that, we're going to have our differential set to fully customized. And I really recommend 
to have your torque acceleration set to 5, your braking. Uh, I got mine set to 30. If you're not too comfortable with 30, then just up it up to about 40, 50, 60. Your torque factoring sensor, uh, I recommend having it set to 30, 70. After that, we're going to have our aerodynamics. The front is going to be right at 63. Uh, for the rear, it's going to be all the way maxed out at 170. For your ECU, make sure you have it, the full control computer equipped. Have it set to 100. The fully customized manual transmission, set that to 300. After that, you're going to have your turbocharger set at the high RPM turbocharger kit. After that, you're going to have the anti-lag system installed. Make sure it is set to strong. Racing intercooler. For your intake and exhaust categories, make sure everything is set to racing. And as we go to the far right, uh, racing clutch flywheel and basically every part uh, that you can get your hands on at the uh, tuning shop. Make sure you have all of those parts in that car. And that's going to be it for the setup. So here we are now beginning with the race. Now I do like to mention as we get this race started that I'm actually am using my wheel uh, for this race. Now my wheel is not a Vantech or Logitech wheel. My wheel is more of a controller type of wheel, uh, so therefore I don't really have that much at all any feedback or whatsoever. So it's like driving a controller, but you have a big analog stick. Um, I'd like to put that out just for example, just to get uh, started off with. So for the first turn, we're already right lurking around eighth place. Uh, we're actually going to just barely get eighth place from the Subaru. As we fall behind the Mercedes Benz on the first turn, uh, we're going back out. Ah, uh, this move just a little bit. Uh, not enough room yet to make the move. Um, the car overall feels a little bit tight, but the handling itself still feels decently good. Um, so as we go around the corner, you can see the car actually does grip very well through this corner, uh, right below that white line. We're going to make a move on the Porsche. Try to we're going to hit the wall just a little bit, but we still get the move done. And we're going to do a dive bomb around the older Subaru, and. Just Tap the wash a little bit. Um, we actually do lose momentum, but thankfully we do keep fifth place. So we're actually right now in the top five. So so far a good start for us. Um, so we're mainly going to try to catch up with the GTR, um, the RX-7, and the older Supra, which we're doing right now. So the car does feel a little bit tight in the early stages of the race because the track is still a little bit damp. But once the track does begin to dry up, once you do have a very nice wide drive race line to race with then the car itself will begin to feel faster and it'll actually feel a little bit better uh, to drive on. But you can see we have much better uh, exit speed compared to the Supra and just like that we're going to make a move on fourth place and we do have to break a little bit early uh, earlier than the rest of the field uh, but we still were able to manage fourth place even though we really messed up that last turn pretty badly. But considering that we made the move so we officially are P4 so, so far a good start for us. It's just us, the GTR, and the RX-7 right in front of us. And then of course you have the Honda all by itself in its own little world. Uh, but other than that, a very good smooth first start uh, for the first lap. So the first lap, we're going to round about right around 2 minutes and 23 seconds, almost 2.24. Um, but here in lap 2, as you can see, this car actually does have some really good straight line speed. As we're going to surpass. Uh, 190 miles per hour through the main straight. Um, you can see the GTR actually did pass the RX-7 for second place. And you can just see how early we do have to break just a little bit early. Um, but once you do get used to how early you have to break, the car actually does feel pretty nice. Um, so you can see we make some good grounds on the RX-7 and once we get to the city area, that seems to be the, the car's best place uh, to pick up the buy time on the AI. So as you can see, we're fifth gear, we're going to break a little bit, we're going to wait, and then right halfway to the apex, back on the power. Um, and you can see how much more time we just basically gained just by doing that. Um, for this section right here, we're going to go down to fourth gear, we're going to break, we're going to wait, lift out the throttle just by a second or two, and then back on the power as we still chase down the RX-7. Uh, and we're right at that striking distance. Uh, you can see, have better racing line than the RX-7, and right around here, we're going to make a move right around here we got behind the gap we're going to make the move on the outside or try to up the hill make a little bit of contact uh, we, the RX-7 doesn't really give us any room and we're forced wide we just barely tap the wall um, but we're still with the RX-7 thankfully 
uh, so our chances of not getting P3 are not yet finished. So we get a better run out of that corner than the Arc 7, and then we're going to really make a move on the outside, or try to at least. Uh, it's going to take a little bit awkward racing line through the apex. We're going to keep it closer to the curb, and just like that, we're going to get P3, straight a car up as soon as we can, get back on the power as soon as we can too, and just like that, we're going to move to third place uh, on lap two. Fast forward now to lap four, as we caught up with the two main leaders, the GTR and the Honda, um, basically left our X7 high drive. We're going to make a beautiful dive bomb on the GTR, and just like that, we're firing ourselves P2, but we're not done yet. We have plenty of momentum compared to the Honda, and right around this corner, have a much better racing line than the Honda, and then just like that, we're going to make the move right here. And just like that, we have plenty of room, have a nice clean pass over the Honda, and right over halfway lap 4, we were able to take the lead. Lap 6 is going to be our lap to pit. As you can see, we're running very low on fuel. Uh, but thankfully we did have enough fuel to make it into pit road. Um, only thing here is a very simple, just add fuel to the car. The tires are in really excellent condition, which kind of surprised me a little bit because I wasn't too sure if the tires were going to easily grain away or if they were going to be nice, strong, and sturdy and durable. And apparently they are very durable. Uh, so we'll just have to wait here for a couple painful seconds so that way our fuel bar gets all the way full. After that we're going to go back on the track do some more time trial laps and that's going to be it uh, for the race. Now you can see here we're going to lose a lead from the RX-7 but there's no need to worry because on lap, lap 7 will be its pit stop so we're going to retake the lead. Here we are fast forward to what's going to be lap 9 which is going to be our fastest lap of the race just to give you guys an idea of what this car is really capable of um, if we do decide to try this run. So as you can see 6th gear running pretty high RPM overall the car does push over 190 pretty easily. Uh, we're going to brake shortly after we pass the first checkpoint. We're going to easily troll brake all the way to third gear. Make sure those tires are below that white line. About halfway to the apex, back on the power. We're going to be on the throttle just for a little bit until you push that first red right, red arrow. Brake, make a right hand turn, apex, halfway through there, back to the power. Through our first overpass, we're going to be in fifth gear. We're going to let off the gas a little bit, brake a little bit hard and then back on the power, halfway to the apex. As we cross the next underpass, we're going to brake, save fifth gear through the section of the track, and then once we approach the next two yellow signs, we're going to brake, go down the fourth gear, make a quick left-right pattern, and then back on the power, once we get the car straightened out. Through our next underpass, we're going to be in fifth gear, we're going to brake down the, back down the fourth gear, stay on that dry racing line for the best grip, and then through here, we're going to brake again, about halfway to that turn, back on the power as well, keep the car straight to get as much straight line speed as possible. Then we're going to brake after that second yellow sign, we're going down in the third gear this time around. Then we're going to stay in third gear, we're going to brake and then back up. once you see those white lines on the track, back on the power as we go down the hill, leave that very tricky right hand hairpin. Uh, we're going to brake as soon as we pass that first yellow sign. Uh, we're going to go all the way down the second gear, keeping the car nice and straight and then make a very deep right cut um, through the apex and then back on the power as soon as you can uh, make sure the car is on that dry racing line for the best grip as you see we just gained a lot of time through there after that it's going to be full throttle the rest of the way and that's going to be a hot lap through Tokyo Expressway using the new Audi DT Coupe at Tokyo Expressway so the car overall might be a little bit on the tight side uh, but once the track does begin to dry up the car actually does feel pretty pleasant to drive it's going to be at 208.388 for our fastest lap we now finish up the race using this car. It's going to be right at 26 minutes and 39 seconds. So this car was a good bit slower compared to uh, the Bulgari that I used yesterday. Also the uh, Evo 9. Um, but this car can still get the job done. And not to mention I was on the wheel, not on controller. I'm usually on controller when I'm doing these runs. Uh, but other than that, the car still did a very nice smooth job. Uh, may not have been as fast as the other cars I did, but it can still get the job done. And we kept the race clean overall, and we get the clean race bonus. Now for race number two, we're going to be using the Nissan GTR uh, 2017 version at Tokyo Expressway. Now this is the regular edition and not the Nismo edition. Just to make sure I get that clear and not get the two cars mixed up. Uh, so this is the more cheaper 
production model. And so if you guys do in fact have that car, then you got the first step already done already, which is great. So I'm going to show you guys now the cool thing about this car is from its last update, it actually now has a chance to have an engine swap added to this car, which is really good. Uh, as you can see on the screen, it's going to cost you about 300,000 credits, which is pretty not too expensive, but at the same time, it actually is a little bit going to cost you a little bit. Um, now, I'll get to say one thing that's clear is that if you guys want to interact with this option, make sure you're a collector level 50, otherwise, uh, you'll not be able to get this chance to get the engine swap in the car. Uh, it'll be faded out, it'll be like it's locked. So, make sure you're level 50. And to get that is you basically have to buy a lot of cars. If you buy a lot of the more rare expensive cars for Haggerty, Haggerty Collection, you can really level it up. Um, so here's the engine swap. It is the LS7-BRZ. If you don't know what that is, that is the, Brazil, the Subaru BRZ drift car. That's the drift car that produces over a thousand horsepower. Um, so this swap goes inside the GTR, which is actually sounds really cool. Um, so we actually do have a really strong powerful engine now Unfortunately what I have for this if I do decide to do this I actually have to nerf it because it's going past the 600 point criteria um, But other than that having that strong engine is going to really pay off uh, for this race So let us fast forward now if you're not low 50 you still have a chance to get this engine swap for free Now unfortunately for me. I don't have the engine swap on me, but if you do have the engine swap uh, two things you can look out for is make sure one of the task bars is lit up a little bit lighter color than the others. Also, on the top right corner, um, if you do have it, you'll have the word compatible. Uh, it'll be right right here. Once you have that on that task bar, then you'll have the engine swap for free. Now, the, here is the livery I'll be using for this race. Uh, if you guys don't follow me in the game, there is the keywords again to look up for this livery. Um, and also another side note make sure you have the wide car body kit installed otherwise like I mentioned before for the Audi TTS livery uh, it will not work so make sure you have the wide body kit installed at the car maintenance and service uh, station so here is the setup that I'll be using for this Tokyo Expressway race first things first we're gonna be using comfort softs as our tire compound uh, suspension you're gonna keep it as is uh, for our differential, we're going to have it fully customized. We're going to have it set to 5, 5 for the torque and acceleration, 10 for braking for the front, and 20 for the rear. We're going to have our torque factoring center set to normal. After that, for our downforce, the front is going to be 60, so it's going to be all the way down to the minimum. For the rear, it's going to be set to 230. Our ECU is going to be full control computer. Make sure it's set to around 86. Our power restrictor is going to be set to 89. Fully customized manual transmission, make sure it's set to 370. And after that, the last part you need is a racing collection flywheel, and that is basically it for the car. Uh, so, just a lot of power restricting, and make sure you have the fully customized ACU to nerf the engine itself, and uh, make sure you have the manual transmission, and that's it. So, you can see this car really is a rocket ship. Uh, as you can see, we easily are passing our other. Um, you know, faker right there. Um, so already the top five by the first turn. Um, braking, you gotta brake a little bit earlier because we do have the stock brakes in the car. But as you can see, all the way to P P4. So we actually are looking pretty good uh, in this race. And one thing to tell you is that in this race, I'm actually using my controller for this race. Um, so, so far so good for this car, and you can see just by the little straightaways, that's what the car really loves, is those little straightaways. The corners, it's kind of iffy on the corners, uh, but it still feels decently well. Uh, but once the track does begin to dry up, the car actually does begin to feel a little bit better to drive uh, in the corners. Uh, but you can see we're going to make a beautiful double overtake right here on the RX-7 and the older Supra. And just like that, we're on P2. Uh, so we're going to set our sets on the Honda, even though the Honda, you can see, it's a little bit further than us, um, further down the road. Uh, so we just got a little bit of work to, to try to catch it down and try to get the lead. But since it's the first lap, I'm not going to try to put myself in really unnecessary risk. I'm going to really be careful around these corners because this is basically the worst part of the track right now. Uh, the first lap seems to be the most trickiest conditions uh, in this track. 
Um, so once we get the first lap, maybe lap two complete, then that's when we can really push as hard as we can. Uh, but you can see we're still making a good bit of ground on the leader still. And just like the other race, this is a all-wheel drive track train, so we can actually go a little bit more aggressive uh, back into the throttle in that last hairpin turn. Uh, so as we go to the main straight, uh, we finish our first lap, a much better improvement than the first run, all the way to P2, and you guys can see on the tracker, uh, we are really catching the leader pretty quickly. So right below 2 seconds out is 1.5, 1.4, it is still dropping like a rock. Uh, you can see we're already hitting 210 at the end of the tunnel. We're getting a nice slipstream from the Honda and we're going to pull to the left side and just like that uh, we'll easily take the lead away from the Honda. Break very early, we still got a nice cushion between us and the Honda. Honda has no chance of trying to make an attack on us and just like that we're going to maintain a very uh, simple racing line. Uh, lap 5, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to stretch it to lap 6. So about halfway left to lap 5, I'm going to uh, level up my fuel map to number 5. And then later in that lap, as we get to the main tunnel on lap 5, we're going to then switch to number 6 for huge fuel saving mode. And then after that, one lap later, we, did, we were able to save enough fuel. We're going to switch it back down to number 1. And after that, we're going to get a new set of comfort soft tires and we'll have to get again have to painfully wait for a long time for us to fill our car back up but the car the way it drove was really good you can see we were able to manage a huge lead over the rest of the field so this car actually felt really smooth through this whole race now like I said we had to painfully have to wait uh, for fueling so that huge lead we had over the rest of the field it's basically diminished uh, we had like a 40 plus lead uh, by the time we actually were able to get back cycled out of Pittsburgh, it was about 4 seconds. Uh, but fast forward now to lap 8, as you'll see the other GTR is going to make a pit stop. So is the rest of the drivers. So basically from places 2nd to 7th place, they're all going to make a pit stop, which would then put the Honda back to the 2nd place. So a first breaking point for this hot lap is shortly after passing the first checkpoint. We're going to break very hard. Uh, we're going to be going all the way down to 3rd gear. Try to say our best to stay on the drag racing line, and after that, we're going to be on the main straight for a little bit and break hard. Keep that car close to the wall and then back on power after the apex. As we approach our first underpass, uh, we'll be right at fifth gear. We're going to go and break for a second and be on the throttle. Just play with the throttle just a little bit, and after that, we're going to break after this corner. Uh, we're going to break and go down to fourth gear after passing uh, the first yellow sign right there. And until we approach this underpass, we're going to be in 4th gear, we're going to left the gas and then back on the power as soon as we get the car straightened out. Uh, the next underpass, we're going to be right at 5th gear, going to early shift, and then we're going to brake to 4th gear. Uh, make sure that car is right side of the road, back on the power, and then we're going to brake again. 4th gear still to the section of the track, we're going to be in 4th gear the rest of this uh, sector right here. As so we go up the hill, we're going to ride the gear, we're going to brake after passing that 100 sign. 1st gear through here as well, back on the power. Uh, then we're going to make a sharp left turn back on the throttle as soon as you see those white lines broken up as we go down the hill that very tricky hairpin uh, fifth gear and then we're going to break after that first sign fourth then third then second gear uh, make sure that's right tires do in fact are close to that curb and then back on the power once you get on the uh, dry part of the track full throttle keep the car straight after that uh, smooth sailing from there on full throttle to Tokyo Expressway. Uh, so very fast lap for the GTR. Uh, might be a little bit tricky to handle in those corners, uh, but once you do get used to how the car handles, you can really put down some very fast laps. That's because the line it's going to be at 206.585, so a very quick lap uh, for the GTR. Now on the last lap, we have to save some fuel, so what I'm going to do is switch the fuel map to number two as we approach the first turn. And we're going to be on this setting pretty much for the rest of the lap until we approach the tunnel entrance as you see here we're right, pretty low on fuel about one percent left so we're going to go ahead and try to move it to map six so that way we'll actually have enough fuel to make it to the finish line without coasting um unfortunately that was not the case as you'll see right about there we actually begin the coast but other than that still a great result uh with the gtr the car felt really good 
uh, considering racing on comfort softs, I wasn't too sure how the car was going to feel uh, doing that. But we did 26-24, so I really was very pleased overall of how the car felt. Um, very quick overall, very smooth as well. Very quick on the main straights, pushing about 220 uh, on that long straight, so the car is very good on top line, top speed so it's a little bit challenging on handling but once you get used to how the card feels uh, then I don't see you have a trouble with this now if you have troubles with Tuck Expressway here is a setup that I have, I have for Le Mans so racing mediums for your tire choice uh, you're gonna keep your differential as is fully customized 5.5, 5, 10, 20 just like it was in Tuck Expressway very downforce though uh, for the front as you see here we actually got to 110 so we actually had more downforce on the front for the setup. After that, make sure you have your output adjustment is set to 92. So is your power restrictor set to 92 as well. And last but not least, uh, we have our high RPM turbocharger as well activated in this car, pushing over a thousand horsepower, which is very quick. So what I recommend doing is, unfortunately, I don't have any race footage, but what I really recommend doing is racing on field map number three. Um, that should last you two laps uh, around the mall. So hopefully that will help you out. Just in case if you don't have, you know, you can't get to work at Tokyo Expressway. So the last thing I want to show you guys now is the new Lamborghini uh, extra menus um, car collection right here. And for the first two cars, for the Lamborghini Mara and the Lamborghini Coutage, unfortunately, these two cars right here. Uh, you'll have to get from Haggerty Collection. Now, I'm not too sure if any of these cars are at the Haggerty Collection as of yet. Uh, but if you're just wondering where you can find those two cars, that's where you're going to find them. However, for the Lamborghini Aventador, uh, you can get it right now at Brand Central, but I'm not too sure how much it costs right now at the moment. Um, but once you do have all three cars in your disposal, uh, you'll then be able to get a six star roulette ticket. Just a six star roulette ticket is not an engine ticket or a parts ticket, so it could. Be either from credits or a part or a car uh, it just depends on what you have in that mini game uh, that will show up in the roulette system so other than that that's going to be it for the episode so hopefully you guys in fact enjoy today's episode I really enjoyed covering uh, both the new Audi TT coupe and the GTR engine swap at Doke Expressway and like I mentioned before if that GTR does not work at Doug Expressway, then just go ahead and use it at Le Mans. That car is a true beast uh, in the straightaway. Just keep look out for your fuel mileage. Like I mentioned before, make sure you have your fuel map set number six at Le Mans, uh, so that way you'll have at least two laps to go around that track, hopefully. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun driving that car. I felt very smooth, uh, especially having that very strong engine in the car as well. Um, so yeah, I really recommend you guys trying out these runs. Hopefully these two runs will be a big tip to you if you decide to do some farming. Either at Lamar or Tokyo Expressway. Um, but yeah, I really am glad of how well the GTR handled uh, for both Tokyo and Lamar. A true mastercraft right there. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, sorry again for my voice again of how it sounds, but... Uh, I am doing better and feeling better. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy the episode today. Hopefully, this will help you out in your grinds. And if you guys, in fact, enjoy the episode, why not leave a like, which would be highly appreciated. Um, also, if you guys would like to follow the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe as well, either on YouTube or just go ahead and follow me in the game as well. Uh, so that way, you can keep a lookout for my liveries when I do share them uh, in my videos. So, if you guys would like to check out my last video I did, which was yesterday, that I did using both the new Mitsubishi Evo and Bukhari watch car, you can click on the video as it approaches right about later. Um, a full guide of both those runs as well, if you'd like to try that out, you're more welcome to do so. And again, hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night, wherever you might be, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.